Hey friends, and welcome back to A Simple Truth. We are continuing through Deuteronomy today, 17 through 20. Now we've looked at a couple different things, uh, well I should say a lot of different things as we've been moving through Deuteronomy, and a lot of summation too, right? So we've already looked through some of this and we're having a review of a lot of this. Uh, last time we looked at a lot of different regulations as well as the feasts. We talked about um, kind of every seven years what that uh, freedom kind of looks like. Uh, next, we're going to be looking at the portion for the priests and the Levites, right? So they didn't have specific, um, their inheritance looked different, I'll say that. Uh, so their portion looks different. Um, next, we'll be looking also at the notation of a new prophet. So there's supposed to be a new prophet that's supposed to raise up after Moses um, to help lead, uh, lead God's people. And then more on cities of refuge, and we've talked about cities of refuge where people go if they accidentally kill someone. Uh, we'll be looking at property, um, and then also principles surrounding uh, warfare. So we'll see some of that as well. Again, this is going to be in chapter 17 through 20. So, chapter 17. You shall not sacrifice to the Lord your God a bull or a sheep which has any blemish or defect, for that is an abomination to the Lord your God. If there is found among you within any of your gates which the Lord your God gives you, a man or a woman who has been wicked in the sight of the Lord your God, in transgressing his covenant, <clears throat> who has gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun or the moon, or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded, and has told you, and you hear of it, then you shall inquire diligently. And if it is indeed true and certain that such an abomination has been committed in Israel, then you shall bring out to your city gates the man or woman who has committed that wicked thing, and shall stone to death that man or woman with stones. Whoever is deserving of death shall be put to death on the testimony of two or three witnesses. He shall not be put to death on the testimony of one witness. The hands of the witnesses shall be the first against him to put him to death, and afterward the hands of all the people. So you shall put away the evil from among you. If a matter arises which is too hard for you to judge, between degrees of guilt for bloodshed, between one judgment or another, or between one punishment or another, matters of, con con excuse me, matters of controversy within your gates, then you shall rise and go up to the place which the Lord your God chooses, and you shall come to the priests, the Levites, and to the judge there are in those days, and inquire of them. They shall pronounce upon you the sentence of judgment. You shall do according to the sentence which they pronounce upon you in that place which the Lord chooses, and you shall be careful to do according to all that they order you. According to the sentence of the law in which they instruct you, according to the judgment which they tell you, you shall do. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left from the sentence which they pronounce upon you. Now the man who acts presumptuously will not heed the priests, and will not heed the priest who stands to minister there before the Lord your God, or the judge that man shall die. So you shall put away the evil from Israel, and all the people here shall hear and fear and no longer act presumptuously. When you come into the land the Lord your God has given you and possess it and dwell in it and say, I will set a king over me like the nations that are around me, you shall surely set a king over you whom the Lord your God chooses. One from among your brethren, you shall set a king over you. You may not set a foreigner over you who is not your brother. But he shall not multiply horses for himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses. For the Lord your God has said to you, You shall not return that way again. Neither shall he multiply wives for himself, lest his heart turn away. Nor shall he greatly multiply silver or gold for himself. Also, it shall be, when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write for himself a copy of his law in a book from the one before the priests, the Levites. And it shall be with him that he shall read all the days of his life, and that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, and be careful to observe all the words in this law and the statutes, that his heart may not be lifted from above his brethren, that he may not turn aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, and that he may prolong his days in the midst of the kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. The priests, the Levites, all the tribe of Levi, shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire and his portion. Therefore, they shall have no inheritance among the, their brethren. The Lord is their inheritance, as he has said to them. And this shall be the priests due from the people, from those who offer a sacrifice, whether it is a bull or a sheep. They shall give to the priests the shoulder, the cheeks, and the stomach, the first fruits of your grain, and the new wine of your oil, 
and the first of the fleece of your sheep you shall give him. For the Lord your God has chosen him out of all your tribes to stand a minister in the name of the Lord, him and his sons forever. <clears throat> so if a Levite comes from any of your gates, from where he dwells among all Israel, and he comes with the desire of his mind to the place the Lord chooses, then he may serve in the name of the Lord his God, as all his brethren the Levites do, who stand there before the Lord. They shall have equal portions to eat, besides what comes from the sale of his inheritance. When you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire, or anyone who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all those who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations, which you will dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear according to all you desired of the Lord your God and Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again from the voice of the Lord my God, nor let me see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord spoke to me. What they have spoken is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and he will put my words into his mouth, and then he shall speak to them all that I command. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word that the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that's the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. Chapter 19. When the Lord your God has cut off the nations whose land the Lord your God is giving to you, and you dispossess them and dwell in their cities and in their houses, you shall separate three cities for yourself in the midst of your land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. You shall prepare roads for yourself and divide into three parts the territory of your land which the Lord your God is giving you to inherit, any, that any manslayer may flee there. And this is the case of the manslayer who flees there, that he may live. Whoever kills his neighbor unintentionally, not having hated him in the past, as when a man goes into the woods with his neighbor to cut timber, and his hand swings a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slips from the handle and strikes his neighbor so that he dies. He shall flee to one of those cities and live, lest the avenger of blood, while his anger is hot, pursue the manslayer and overtake him, <clears throat> because he was because the way is long and kill him, though he was not deceiving, excuse me, deserving of death, since he had not hated the victim in the past. Therefore, I command you, saying, You shall separate three cities for yourself. Now, if the Lord your God enlarges your territory, as he swore to your fathers, and gives you the land which he promised to give to your fathers, and if you keep all these commandments, and do them, which I commanded you to today, to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, then you shall add three more, three more cities for yourself besides these three, lest innocent blood be shed in the midst of your land, which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and thus guilt of bloodshed be upon you. But if anyone hates his neighbor and lies in wait for him, rises against him and strikes him mortally so that he dies, and he flees to one of those cities, then the elders of the city shall send and bring him from there and deliver him over to the hand of the avenger of blood that he may die. Your eye shall not pity him, but you shall put away the guilt of the innocent blood from Israel, that it may go well with you. You shall not remove your neighbor's landmark, which the men of old have set in your inheritance, which you will inherit a land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. One witness shall not rise against a man concerning any iniquity or any sin that he commits by the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established. If a false witness arises among any man to testify against him of wrongdoing, then both men in the controversy shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges who serve in those days. And the judges shall make a careful iniquity. And indeed, if the witness is a false witness, who has te testified falsely against his brother, then you shall do to him as he thought to have done to his brother, so that you shall put away the evil from among you. And those who remain shall fear, hear and fear, and thereafter they shall not again commit such evil among you. 
Your eye shall not pity. Life shall be for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Chapter 20. When you go out in the battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. So it shall be that when you are on the very verge of battle, that the priest shall approach and speak to the people, and he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart be faint. Do not be afraid and do not tremble or be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. Then the officers shall speak to the people, saying, What man is there who has built a new house and has not dedicated? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in battle and another man to dedicate it. Also, what man is there who has planted a vineyard and has not eaten of it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in battle, and is another man to eat, it, eat of it. And what man is there who is betrothed to a woman and has not married her? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in battle, and another man marry her. The officers shall speak further to the people and say, What man is there who is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his house, lest the heart of his brethren faint like his heart, and so it shall be, that when the officers have finished speaking to the people, that they shall make captains of the armies to lead the people. When you go near a city to fight against it, then proclaim an offer of peace to it, and it shall be that if they accept your offer of peace and open it to you, then all the people who are found in it shall be placed under tribute to you and serve you. Now if the city will not make peace with you, but war against you, then you shall besiege it. And when the Lord your God delivers it into your hands, you shall strike every male in it with the edge of the sword. But the women, the little ones, the livestock, and all that's in the city, all of its spoil, you shall plunder for yourself, and you shall eat the, eat the enemy's plunder, which the Lord your God gives you. Thus you shall do to all the cities, which are very far from you, which are not the cities of these nations. But of the cities of these people, which the Lord, God, your, Lord your God gives you as an inheritance, you shall let nothing that breathes remain alive, but you shall utterly destroy them, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Parasite, the Heviotite, the Hevitite, the Jebusite, just as the Lord your God has commanded you, lest they teach you to do according to all their abominations, which they have done for their gods, and you sin against the Lord your God. When you besiege a city for a long time, while making war against it to, to take it, you shall not destroy its trees by wielding an axe against them. If you can eat of them, do not cut, down, do not cut them down to use in the siege. For the, the tree, excuse me, for the tree of the field is man's food. Only the trees which you know are not trees for food you may destroy and cut down to build seed works against the city that makes war with you until it is subdued. So some good content. I, I don't really have any big revelations today. I just, I saw the property boundary thing. I thought that was cool. Um, I didn't understand it when I read it at first, like don't move your property boundary lines. Um, and I didn't understand how that was a thing. Um, and I had heard that rocks were often used um, to kind of cordon off your boundaries, like at your corners or whatever, or kind of lined along. And so people would slowly begin to move those rocks little by little so that maybe their neighbors wouldn't notice. Um, I mean, I know that's, that's no big revelation. I just thought that was really interesting. I was like, oh, they have specifically in here, do not do that. That's incredibly, incredibly dishonest. Um, but yeah, it's, that's stealing. But in any event, yeah, just thought it was interesting and cool. So as always, thanks so much for joining and have a, uh, have a great rest of your day.